Hey there, Lynn Allen here. Welcome to another AutoCAD tip courtesy of the fabulous Catalyst Magazine. I hope you're having a great week so far. I, for one, am just happy not to be snowed in. Yay! So today I'm going to share with you some tips that have to do with the cursor. Not to be confused with cursing. Pretty sure you don't need any tips for that, all right? So now we take a look at the cursor all day long. We work with it all day long. I wanna make sure that you are an expert as to all things related to the cursor so you can set it up to work exactly the way you want to work. Plus I'm gonna share with you a feature, a command that came out specifically for the cursor just a couple of releases ago that I bet you don't know about, all right? It's kind of secret, it's been top secret. <laughs> but by the time you're done with this tip, you too will know about it, all right? so. Now, I'm not in a command right now. I'm sitting around minding my own business. Nothing's going on. So the cursor looks like this, right? It's a plus sign with a pick box right in the middle of it. Now, once I go into a command, like the line command, for example, where it's asking for points, then it switches to just the plus, right? The pick box goes away. Now, if I'm moving over an object where an object snap might be requested, well, then you might get something a little tiny bit different, but basically it just sticks to the plus sign. Now, if I go into a command where it's asked me to select objects, like the erase command, now I only have the pick box, right? So that I can easily select objects. And then once I go back out of the command, I'm back to both, right? The plus sign and the pick box. Now you can customize all of these guys. For example, maybe you want that pick box to be bigger or smaller. You can go into the pick box command and you can set it to any value from zero to 50. So if I want it a little bit bigger, I can set it to 10. Or if you're really, really blind, you can set it to like 50. <laughs> Have fun with your friends. That's what I say. Yes, this is part of the ways to torture your coworker section of my class. <laughs> but, um, or you can even be worse, you can set it to zero. Okay, now look if I go into the erase command, look at the pick box, it's so tiny. Good luck picking anything. Yeah, good luck, you'll never get anything. All right, also, another way to torture your coworker. Let's go back to the pick box command. I always like to use my arrow keys to go back to previous commands. You've seen me talk or heard me talk about that before, right? Let's put it back to something normal, like five. Okay, we're back to the normal world. So you can customize the pick box. You can also customize the, those crosshairs with a command called cursor size. All right, you can see it's defaulting to five. That's 5% of the screen, in case you're wondering what that five means. If I set it to 10, it's gonna get bigger. Now it's 10% of the screen. Now the old, back in the olden days, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, the crosshairs used to go all the way across the screen. And boy, when Autodesk changed it back to be a small size, uh, changed it to be that small size we started with, oh my goodness, you would have thought the world was coming to an end. There was a lot going on, a lot of people were unhappy. So there is a way to put it back, and I'm sure there's still plenty of you out there who use it that way. If you go into cursor size and you set it to 100, that actually means that, that crosshairs, those crosshairs are gonna go all the way across the screen because that 100 means 100% of the screen size, right? So, um, but we don't want that. We wanna put it back to something normal, like we'll say 5% of the screen. So now you have control over the, the crosshairs there. So you can make them larger, smaller, any way you want, whatever works for you, all right? So those are the two options that you have to control the size of those. You can go into options. You can also change the color of these. I'm sure that you're very familiar with this. I'm just gonna really quickly go into options and just remind you that you can go into colors and you can go to crosshairs and you can you know change it to <laughs> whatever works for you. Maybe you're in a magenta mood today, but you have complete control over the color of these. Oh my goodness, color of these as well. Whatever works for you, whatever you're feeling like. Now, what is the new command that I promised you? There's a new command called cursor type. Of course there is, not cursor size, but cursor type. It has two settings. If you have it set to zero, it, the cursor lives the way we're used to the cursor working with the, with the crosshairs and with that aperture in the middle. If you change it to one, it changes it to an arrow, it actually changes it to the Windows cursor that you see in the land of Windows. And you might have actually seen this, for those of you who use Revit, it's also the pick lines cursor. It shows up very rarely, but it shows up every once in a while. Um, but uh, somebody asked for it, so it's kind of weird. You go on the erase command, and you got this weird arrow. <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Um, so I would say this is also another way for you to mess with your Coworkers, once again, that's cursor type, type. 
set set it to one have fun with your friends they'll go crazy trying to figure out how to get their their regular crosshairs back and um, i'm going to put it back to zero uh, there's only those two options as but now it's purple <laughs> or magenta <laughs> anyway there you know all about the cursor now you deal with it all day long you work with it all day long make yourself happy and set it up the way you want it to work all right so I hope you learned a couple of things today. You certainly learned about that top secret new command you can use to mess with your coworkers called cursor type. And I hope to see you back here in two more weeks. Have a great rest of the week.